What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. It is an absolutely beautiful day to be out in the garden today, and it's also a beautiful day to be bringing an episode out to you guys. So I hope you guys are gonna enjoy this one. And so what we're gonna be doing today is we're going to be talking about some concerns that you guys had or mistakes that you made and ways to fix them. You see, as gardeners, I think oftentimes you're either perfect or you're a failure. And there's just such a black and white there that it really is not true at all. There's such a gray area. It's such a spectrum of gardeners. You know, there's some gardeners that seem perfect, but, you know, underlying, I think they think there's a lot of things that they could do better. You know, a true gardener, a true gardener, one that's not all hoity-toity and high on their horse, a true gardener looks at their garden and says, there's a lot of success, but you know what? There's a lot of failure that I still want to learn from. I still want to um, better my garden. And that's a true gardener. Knowing that we make mistakes is the first thing to actually becoming a better gardener. The second thing is learning from those mistakes and uh, not jumping to the extreme, which is just to rip them out. You know, mistakes are mistakes. But what's worse is taking that mistake and magnifying it by just ripping it out because then you can't even learn from that mistake. Once you've ripped it out, you've already committed to the fact that it's dead, you screwed up, and your garden's a failure. And once you get in that mindset, it's really hard to escape that. And I want you guys to kind of try to break that negative, uh, that negative mindset and turn a negative into a positive. The first ones are with tomatoes. When you are single stemming your tomatoes, one of the most common mistakes that people make is accidentally pruning the main growth, the main growing stem. The leader is the thing that you want to continue growing. The leader is the main stem. If that gets pruned, obviously it can't continue to grow up. So a lot of people accidentally prune their main leader and they say, well, my tomato plant is a loss. I cut it off at like two feet, trying to single stem it. I broke the main leader, maybe it snapped. It's happened to us where we're working with a big heavy plant and all of a sudden we're trying to kind of wrestle it up there and the main leader snaps. Well, what do we do? We don't pull it out. We don't pull out the tomato plant. We don't start over with a new seedling. We don't do that. And that's because the tomato plant will be so far behind if you do that, that there's a really simple fix. Here's a very common mis mistake. This right here is the main growth stem that goes out. This right here is the main leader. But right next to it, we have a very mature sucker that looks like it could also be the main leader. This could be considered a fork. If the plant forks, sometimes it will grow a sucker right next to the main leader. So you have this little V here. A lot of times gardeners will accidentally just clip that off thinking that this is the main growth stem, only to find out that they've clipped the main growth stem in favor of a sucker. Well, if this is gone, this new sucker can be turned into the new, the new main leader. All you have to do is just continue this up and just continue trailing this upward. This will then be the main leader. It'll take a little bit longer to fruit, but at least it can continue growing upwards and you have a tomato plant still. Let's say we took this off, right? And let's say our plant was really well maintained and we'd taken off all the suckers. Let's say, let's say this main growth stem here got snapped off somehow. What can we do? Well, we leave it. We simply leave the plant in, and what's going to happen is this plant actually will send a signal to send a new growth, a new sucker, somewhere around here. Even if you've already taken off, even if you've already taken off these suckers, what will happen is a new one will form because the plant actually will send a signal down to a lower branch that says, okay, I can't grow up here anymore. My main growth stem has been cut. My leader has been cut. I need you to send a sucker out. So it'll send out a secondary sucker. And that will take about a, maybe about a week or two weeks to start forming. And once that forms, all you have to do is take that down to, to that new sucker, clip it off right there, and then favor that sucker upwards. You don't have to pull out the tomato plant just because you accidentally lost your main growth stem. Now I think one of the most popular mistakes that us as gardeners make is overwatering. This is something that can be out of our control and sometimes is not out of our control. I like to say sometimes we just kill our plants with kindness. We just keep watering them thinking that they're going to need all of that water, but in fact, so often they don't need that much water and they begin to drown and suffer from root rot. Or, like in our case, we have a really wet spring. This is completely out of our control and there's nothing we can do. You see, when we planted this peach tree, we had no intention of getting such a wet spring. In fact, it was one of the wettest springs on record. We got more rain in one month than we usually do in an entire year here in Michigan. There was mass flooding everywhere 
And it was something that completely caught everyone off, by, uh, off guard. And so what happened to this tree is it started to suffer from root rot. It started to drop all of its leaves. It started to defoliate and just turn super yellow. It looked anemic. And I thought for sure it was going to die. And your natural inclination is just to rip it out. It looks dead. It probably is dead. I'm just gonna rip it out and get it over with. But here's what happened. What happened was it started to dry out. It stopped raining and the soil dried out and the roots did heal. Now the plant is obviously still weak. It's pretty defoliated. But the saving grace is the fact that there is tons, and I mean tons, of beautiful new green foliage. That's going to come back, it's going to generate energy for the plant, and that's going to create more root development. And that root development is going to, f is going to actually fuel more growth. And this plant is healing, and it's going to be thriving next year as long as something else doesn't set it back. But if I were just to rip it out, I would have nothing there. The second mistake that happens as gardeners is our pepper plants snap. Pepper plants are extremely prone to snapping because of the fact they're very fragile. We might be harvesting a pepper really too hard. We're not using snips like we should. That's happened to me in the past. And you, you pull it off really hard and the whole plant ac accidentally snaps. It snaps right at the base of the stem. You know, oh my gosh, it's the worst thing that could possibly happen because all of that growth is taking place. It's taken so much time to get all developed and then you just accidentally snapped it off. Or maybe it's beyond your control. Maybe it's an animal or nature like wind or hail and it just snaps it off right at the top and you're left with just a, a stick sticking out. Well, that kind of stinks, but you don't have to pull it out. Believe it or not, that's actually, that actually can be a good thing for you as a gardener if you have a long enough growing season because what happens is very similar to what happens when you accidentally break the main leader on a tomato plant. So this plant here was broken off right at the stem. And what ended up happening was it sent all new side growth out. It sent out one new growth stem, two new growth stems, three new growth stems. And you can see there where it broke off. It broke off there and it just kind of forked into three right in the top there. But also what it did, it just started sending more side growth. All that side growth, if we were to clip all this back or lose this, that side growth would grow back and it would continue to bush out. This could be a very good way to actually get your pepper plants to bush. And in some cases, people actually prune their pepper plants to increase their yields because of that response that sends out side growth. Now for us, obviously we don't have a super long growing season, so I don't prefer to break my pepper plants off because we don't have a really long growing season for them to keep growing back and bushing out. But this natural response here is what happens when your pepper plant loses its main, its main leader. And so that's what you need to do as well. Just leave it in the ground, leave it as a stick. And what you'll find out is that it continues to grow back. The next mistake I see so many gardeners making is overcrowding. Overcrowding is us as gardeners basically being overly optimistic with the space that we have, thinking that everything we plant is going to have plenty of space and can totally mature and nothing will be stressed, right? It's not really how it works. Things need space. Plants need their designated space, their certain amount of nutrients, their sunlight, their water. They need all of those things to grow. This is one of those cases where sometimes it's just thinning. If we plant too many of one crop, say radishes or lettuce, and they're too crowded, and you can see that they're really struggling, but everything is planted super close together, just thin a little bit. If you can thin and you can trim out some of those plants, you're trimming out some of them but you're not losing all of them. Because sometimes all it takes is trimming out a few and opening up some airflow, giving less competition, and some of those other plants can then bounce back, recover from that stress, and they can do just fine, rather than ripping them all out. The other thing is planting too many different varieties of plants too closely together. What can happen then is you have competition as well, but what you can do is you can dig them out. Now, a lot of people are afraid to dig plants out even fully mature plants. But here's the thing, a fully mature plant, as long as you can dig out some of the root system, if you transplant that, that root system might end up with a stressed plant, but at least it won't kill everything around it from competition. You can stress a plant by cutting some of its roots, but if you transplant it in a better area with good soil, nurture it back with plenty of water and, uh, and keeping it out of harsh sun, it's gonna go through some transplant shock, but in the end, it's probably gonna thrive a lot better than it would have had you had it crowded. So we already talked about too much water. Now I wanna talk about not enough. This is a problem that's very easily identified, 
but the mistake is not in giving them not enough water, which is kind of a mistake. You know, you don't want to not give them enough water, but it's not giving them enough water, realizing that they need more water, and then giving them too much water. This is a very common problem that I see a lot of gardeners make, is they say, okay, the first response is that the leaves are drooping. Why do the leaves droop? Well, they droop because they're reducing the amount of surface area that the sun can touch. If your leaves are out like this, there's a whole lot more sun exposure than like this. And so that's why the leaves droop. It reduces the sun exposure. But then, as gardeners, we see that and we flood it with water. We just absolutely dump the water on by the gallon all the time, every day, until we see it start to perk up. The problem is, is when cells dehydrate, you're the exact same way. When you're dehydrated, the worst thing you can do is to guzzle a bunch of water. If you do, you'll actually throw up. The same exact thing, well, the plants don't really throw up, but the same exact thing happens to your tree roots or your plant roots. If they're dehydrated, you wanna give them small amounts of water, a cup or two at a time every hour. Don't flood them with gallons because what happens is those cell walls, they dehydrate and they shrink because the cell wall is about 90, or the cell itself is about 95% water. And when that water leaves, the cell wall shrinks. But if you give it a ton of water all at once, the cell walls expand really quickly and it ends up rupturing. And when it ruptures, it can't heal. It ends up dying. And that can cause your tree or your shrub or your plant to die. And you don't want to, you don't, you do not want to risk your trees dying by just giving them too much water because the simple solution is to give them just a little bit at a time. Just like if you're dehydrated, sip water slowly. If you sip water slowly, it actually, your body can uptake it much easier and you don't end up throwing up. So very simple solution. And also a PSA to all of you guys out in the garden, stay hydrated. Water is the key to life and you need it just as much as your trees do, but everything in moderation. All right, let's go on to the next one. One of the final mistakes I see a lot of gardeners making is over fertilizing. This is a problem because a lot of gardeners go with synthetic fertilizers and inorganic fertilizers, and those are very potent plant available nutrients. What can happen is if we put those on the garden, the roots and leaves can burn. It's a lot trickier to over fertilize with organic fertilizer because they're typically more gentle and they're not all plant available nutrients. Some are slow release, or at least a good portion of the fertilizer is slow release, meaning that it takes time to break down. So the plant can't just have access to it all right away. Even if it wanted to, it couldn't take it all up. So the problem is with these synthetic plant available nutrients that are, that are commercially available in every store right at eye level, seen as the most you know <laughs> grab and go, ready to grow type stuff, it sometimes has its side effects. And that is sometimes over fertilizing. If you don't follow the label exactly and you over fertilize, or if you already had enough nutrients in your soil and your plant was growing almost fine or near fine and you put more on than you need, it's going to over fertilize. And what happens is the roots burn and the leaves burn and that causes the plant to turn limp and turn yellow. And the response to that as a beginning gardener is, I did just fertilize, but maybe it wasn't enough. And you go back and you re-fertilize. That's such a big problem because then you've already over fertilized and over fertilized plant. And that ends up usually killing the plant. Or if the plant turns yellow and limp, we tend to overwater. We think it's watering. And so we then overwater. But one of the biggest things we need to do is realize we just fertilized. If you've kept watering consistent, just keep watering, making sure the soil is damp, not too damp, not too dry. Just make sure it stays evenly moist. And what will happen is that stress will pass. That stress is caused from the roots burning. As the roots burn and, get, and it gets more accustomed to all that fertilizer, it will then bounce back from that stress and it should begin growing normally again. That's if you did not fertilize to the point of killing it. But if you did just enough to stress it out and cause some root burn or leaf burn, that can be fixed generally by just waiting, holding off on the fertilizer, don't give it any more, don't pull the plant out, just wait and keep it watered and usually it will bounce back just fine. So that's all the mistakes and some fixes that you make as gardeners, that I've made as a gardener. And I really hope that you guys don't pull your plants out, that you learn from your mistakes and grow as gardeners as you begin growing your garden. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you all on tomorrow's episode. As always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch you all later. See ya.